Hello again and welcome to the Digital Health and Wearable series. Another fantastic episode uh, today for you. But before I go ahead and introduce my fantastic guest, I'd like to acknowledge our global partner, Spirit Digital, and other uh, innovative partners that uh, are with us. But without further ado, that gives me great pleasure to introduce uh, Rafael Grossman, which is a surgeon, educator, and a digital health futurist. Rafael, how are you? I'm very well, uh, Joao. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, brilliant. Nice, nice to see you. I know that you have been busy. I've been following your work and the interviews, and you were on the BBC News. Congratulations. Thank you very much. It's uh, been busy, but it's all good. I'm healthy, so that's uh, a blessing. Fantastic. So the first question that I have for you is, do you feel that we are using available innovations and technologies to the um, full potential? Wow, well, uh, I, I think my, my answer is, is, is pretty, uh, pretty radical that, 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 that we are not. <laughs> I think that um, with the uh, technology that we have available today, most of it was created for uh, and not the, the purpose of uh, improving and augmenting, uh, for example, healthcare, but still could be used in uh, different ways, uh, innovative ways, in order to improve and augment how we teach, how we learn, and how we do healthcare. I think that uh, we're far behind. I think that the potential to uh, innovate and think differently and use those technologies to connect and communicate and uh, open up uh, the, the, the blessings of, uh, of the technology to, to the global audience to the, to the world and, and equalize the system a little bit it's uh, certainly not uh, uh, there yet i see I, I do agree with you fantastic and you have a lot of experience and you were the first surgeon to use the google glasses a few years ago wasn't it I, so then yeah. another fantastic uh, accolation to your portfolio and moving on the second question is as a futurist uh, what examples of innovations and emerging technologies that you recently been impressed with? Well, there, there's there's a lot, uh, but uh, to try to narrow it, uh, I think that uh, we could focus uh, a little bit in the generic uh, categories, right? Uh, I'm, I'm very, very uh, excited and impressed where the immersive technologies are going you know immersive technologies being you know virtual reality augmented reality mixed reality what we call xr which in medicine uh, we called mxr uh, i think that the progress has been very very fast and uh, if we take into account you know uh, devices uh, like you know the the, the google glass and uh, going very quickly from my google glass to a device uh, uh, like uh, the uh, the uh, Google Cardboard and devices like uh, the View 6 uh, and devices like, you know, the Google Quest and then, you know, maybe, you know, the, the HoloLens or uh, the, the Magic Leap or the Unreal. I think that in the lapse of a few years, we really, really make great uh, strides. I think that I'm very excited, uh, you know, the Vario device, the XR3 that combines VR and uh, XR in, in one device. You know, very powerful. I think that we have the, the potential to radically transform how we teach and how we learn and how we uh, even do diagnostics and even treatment in uh, in healthcare. I think that that's very exciting. And on the other hand, uh, another uh, technology sort of trend that is important to 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 acknowledge, I think, is uh, artificial intelligence. Right? We've been talking about artificial intelligence for for decades and I think that now it's just more visible but uh, artificial intelligent algorithms you know from natural language processing to uh, a, a you know a, a, a RAPs to, to uh, a machine learning I think that uh, the, the transformation uh, because of those uh, uh, applications in healthcare is going to be really really uh, profound and then third I would uh, name wearables I think that the wearable devices today are getting to a point where uh, they're almost invisible, you know, where they are a, a, a powerful a, a enough to 
to uh, uh, don't even need charge. So devices that self-charge themselves, devices that are on us, and we don't even you know think about them gathering data. I think that AI analyzing that kind of data that we you know uh, uh, provide uh, to the to the cloud, I think that that has uh, the potential for very very powerful impact in uh, order to to preserve and to uh, regain uh, health. Mm, fantastic. Uh, that's really really good. And we, we both have an interest in wearables. You know, my vision is that the wearables can change the world. And very, very, uh, let's say slowly, we're seeing a huge impact, especially in healthcare, but in other uh, industries as well. I like all the devices that you uh, showcase there. And there's a kind of a progression as well. And I know that you try lots of them and you try different things. And, and Rafael, fascinating conversation. We could spend an hour just talking about wearables. <laughs> but yeah. moving on, and the last question, one problem that I see and I believe that we have in healthcare and in general in innovation is that the people making the decisions, they don't understand innovation in healthcare. So the question for you is a bit of a, a complex one, is if you were in charge of a country or an health system, what steps or measures would you immediately take to close the gaps and leverage technology in order to improve healthcare? Yeah, that's certainly a, a broad, uh, complex question. Uh, you know, I think that if it, if it wasn't in charge of, of, of healthcare, let's say for for a country, right? Or, or let's say for the world, right? I think that it's a, a really important that we use, like I said before, technology in a smart way in order to improve how we connect and how we communicate. Uh, that is vital to, to teach, to diagnose, and to treat in healthcare and to have inclusion in healthcare. So uh, the, the infrastructure needs to be ready so that everyone has access to connectivity. Call it uh, 3G or 4G or LTE or 5G or 6G. I think that that's very important. Uh, or Wi-Fi, uh, make it a, a fast, uh, a, you know, high-speed uh, fiber or, or, or broadband or want to call it a Starlink satellites all over the world. We need to improve connectivity. So once that happens, I think that in healthcare is vital that we uh, really do digital the way it should be, right? A digital, not just creating uh, electronic medical records that uh, are focused on, on documentation and billing, uh, but the medical records that a, a highlight the a empathetic a humane relation between doctors and patients to rescue that uh, a human side of medicine that we have lost because of the inappropriate use of digital health or inappropriate use of technology in healthcare. I think that that's one thing. I think we need to digitalize a healthcare in in a in a in a, in a, in a, in a proper manner, in, in the right way. I think that uh, improving uh, documentation, uh, improving uh, data access and analysis of the data will really free us, uh, uh, free up us humans to be able to connect with the patients better. I think that interoperability is, 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 is a must. And, uh, uh, you know, if you see today, for example, what's happening with vaccination, where, 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 you know, we don't even know who's getting vaccines or who's not getting vaccines and vac vaccines don't even have, you know, a, a, a QR codes or barcodes in order to document, you know, what type of vaccine you got, which date, where do you get it, uh, what vaccine is, is this, the first one or the second one. I think that is all being done, you know, manually in many ways. And, and that is you know, incredible to even even think about that in the 21st century, right? In the year 2021, we are uh, still doing things in a non-digital way. I think that there's a lot of progress uh, to be made, and I think we have the tools. We just need to use the tools in a in a smart way. Mm, well, fantastic answer. I really agree with you that the infrastructures have to be ready because we have the innovation, but the process and infrastructures sometimes are not in place. Fantastic conversation. You know I'm a fan of yours. I follow your stuff. I know you follow mm -hmm. mine. You're doing fantastic work. I hope the, I mean, the airways will uh, open soon so we can meet somewhere in some uh, conference around the world. And Rafael, before I thank you and close the episode for today, I finish all my episodes with a bit of a, a surprise, which is one minute of fame, which you, over to you, you can mention anything whatsoever, an innovator, a family achievement, a personal achievement, a professional achievement, anything whatsoever. So 
Over to you, please. Well, uh, if I can mention a, uh, let's say a fun fact, uh, um, you know, uh, I remember when I was uh, a, a, a starting here in Maine, uh, which is where I practiced for the last, uh, you know, many years, and uh, we used telemedicine. We used to use telemedicine quite a bit, and uh, we, uh, when the iPhone 4 came out with the FaceTime, a capability, right? Video connectivity on a, on a smartphone, which we never could do before, before 2011. And we created a platform in order to do a program, a pilot program to connect different sites to do emergency trauma consultations with uh, iPod touch devices. That was the first uh, a, a topic of uh, uh, the topic of my first TEDx talk. I've done a few TEDx talks, but this was the first one. And uh, so uh, I remember the first patient I treated, a young girl with a facial trauma after skiing, and I, she was about you know 200 kilometers away, and I was at the hospital, and they consulted us for the trauma, and uh, on the uh, uh, iPhone. I could uh, connect with her in the ER and with her mother. And after all this excitement, because it was the first time and whatnot, and we were all excited that we didn't have to use the big computer, you know, telemedicine machines, but just my phone uh, with an app, uh, you know, she, uh, and I was talking to mom, my mom was all excited that she was seeing the expert trauma surgeon. And then the girl said, you know, like a 10 year old girl, what's all this excitement? This is just like Skype, mom. Mm -hmm. And that reinforces the fact that when we think about telemedicine and telehealth, it's not telemedicine or telehealth is just health it's just medicine we just using different ways to connect and communicate better because it's all about the smart use of the technology in order to connect and communicate better in order to improve healthcare so that's a kind of a quick one <laughs> yeah that's a fantastic example and a really nice analogy to finish off Rafael that leads me to thank you so much for your time and your expertise and insights um, mm -hmm. Hopefully, I'll see you next time. Muchas gracias. I hope so. De nada. Un abrazo. Gracias. I hope I see you next time and wish all the best to our viewers. If you have not subscribed, please do so and share with your communities in healthcare. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Thank you.